It turns out that cancer doesn't start from just one abnormal rogue cell. Cancer starts when an entire organ, which is at risk of cancer, becomes somewhat abnormal. For example, a person doesn't get lung cancer from just a single cancer cell in the lung. Instead, the entire respiratory system, as shown here, becomes abnormal, and all the cells in the respiratory system accumulate more and more mutations until they are clearly abnormal, which eventually leads to a cluster of cells to develop a tumor at some point. Fortunately, what this means for lung cancer is that since the entire respiratory system becomes abnormal at an early stage, an early stage cancer detection test might be possible by studying any cell in the entire respiratory system without having to directly examine the cells from a lung. So, for example, we could just scratch off a few cells from inside the cheek of someone's cheek. This is very easy to do and it's not painful at all. And using a suitable test, we might study just those cells from inside the cheek without having to go all the way to the lung and then determine if they are starting to become abnormal or not. Of course, the challenge here is that if we want to determine if cells are starting to become abnormal or not, it turns out that we need to be able to study features of biological cells that are the, on the order of 20 to 200 nanometers in size. But conventional imaging technologies can only either image cells, image features of cells that are larger than 200 nanometers using our eyes or a light microscope, for example. And this is because the diffraction limit of light can't be used to study anything smaller than about a half of a wavelength. Or the imaging technologies that can examine smaller features than 200 nanometers, like an electron mic microscope or the so-called nanoscope, unfortunately, these cannot be used to study the behavior of living cells. Because the cells either experience too much radiation or they must first be stained or mixed with other substances that can either kill them or alter their behavior. So what does this leave us? This is the design challenge for this portion of the class. We want to develop a new imaging technology for detecting cancer at an ultra early stage. In order to be able to study how cells evolve in the early stages of cancer, we need this imaging technology to be friendly to living cells, meaning we don't want the imaging technology to damage or change the behavior of the cells. Second, we need this imaging technology to be able to characterize cell features on the order of 20 to 200 nanometers in size. And this is beyond the diffraction limit of light. So what do you think? Coming up with a new imaging technology is difficult because people have been interested in this for years. But how would you approach this problem? What tools would you use or develop so that you could brainstorm and try out different ideas?